Hi everyone, welcome back to Karen Puzzles. I'm Karen and I've got a confession to make. I have never glued a puzzle together. I know, that's so crazy for someone who literally runs a YouTube channel about jigsaw puzzles. I feel like someday I'm going to be doing a whole series reviewing all the different puzzle glues, but before I get to that, Today I had a different idea. What if instead of gluing a puzzle together, I taped a puzzle together? This is going to be a very, very scientific experiment for how to tape a puzzle together in a few different ways, hang it up on your wall, and then hopefully be able to take it back down, remove the tape, and still be able to do it as a puzzle. Because that's my issue with gluing a puzzle together is what if it's a puzzle I really like? I want to be able to do it multiple times, and once you glue it together, it is stuck that way forever. So I have three methods that I'm going to be trying today. Extra wide washi tape, painter's tape, and contact paper. And the puzzles that I'm going to be using are all 750 piece Seiko brand puzzles so that the differences between the puzzles hopefully won't affect our results. And of course, as always, I'm going to have links to all of the supplies and all of the puzzles right down below. Okay, are you ready to test this out with me? Let's get started. So our first one is this donut puzzle by Seiko, and I really hope that I can get the tape off of it afterwards because I really like this puzzle. I'm using extra wide washi tape, which is the Scotch Expressions brand, and I bought it at Target for, I think, $10. Now, obviously, we'll need to flip this whole thing over. So to do this, have a second piece of foam core on hand, place it on top of the puzzle, which is already on a piece of foam core, and then carefully flip the whole thing over. Now we have access to the back of the puzzle, and we can just cut really long strips of this wide washi tape and tape the whole thing together. I made sure to overlap the tape by about a half inch or so. And once I had covered the entire thing, I also added a few vertical stripes for extra stability. Obviously, if any tape is hanging over the edge, you can go ahead and cut that off. And I think that looks pretty good. I was able to flip the whole thing back over without it coming apart. And I just added a few bulldog clips to the top so that I'll be able to hang it up on the wall. Next up is this Aladdin puzzle, also by Seiko. Just like before, I carefully flipped it over. For this one, I'll be using blue painter's tape. I'm using this two inch tape by Duck Brand so that I don't have to use a million strips of a thinner tape. And since painter's tape is so cheap and I had such a giant roll of it, I decided to do an entire second layer of vertical stripes. Just like the washi tape, this feels pretty solid, and I was able to flip it back over without any of the pieces coming off. So I added my clips, and now let's move on to the third method. For this one, I'm using this owl puzzle, also by Seiko, and also 750 pieces. And I'll be taping it together with contact paper. Once again, just flip it over. And then, since contact paper has a backing, I was able to cut both pieces that I would need before pressing them down. To apply big pieces of contact paper like this, just carefully peel up the backing from one side and unroll it across the puzzle. This method was definitely the quickest, since I only needed to apply two pieces of contact paper 
rather than a million strips of tape. And since the contact paper is on the back, you don't have to worry about a few wrinkles or air bubbles. However, I did find that I really had to press down on the contact paper more than I did with the tape, which makes me a little worried about being able to remove it later. Also, when I flipped this one back over, one of the corners did come off. Um, I was able to press that back into place and it seems to be hanging on, but that didn't happen with the other two methods. So we'll see how it goes trying to remove all of that tape in a week. But in the meantime, I took down these posters that are hanging up in our living room. And I used the nails that are in the wall for those three posters to instead hang up my three puzzles. And I have to say, even though I've always been kind of against hanging up puzzles, because I want to be able to do them again, and because I feel like it can look a little tacky, I do kind of love how these look on my wall. Not all three of them together because they don't really match each other, but if it was just one of them, I don't know, I might be kind of into it. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to leave those hanging up for a week and then I'll be back to try to remove all of the tape and see if I can still put them together as puzzles. So take it away, me from a week from now. One week later. Okay, everyone, it has been a full week, and I know that I totally could have just faked this for the camera, but I promise that I actually did leave them hanging up on my wall for a week. So if we head out to the living room, all three puzzles are hanging up. They all look great. So I mean, regardless of whether I can get the tape off, all three methods definitely work if you don't have glue on hand, but you still want to hang up your puzzles. But this is the real question here. Let's see if it's reversible. So first up is the washi tape on the back of the donut puzzle. The vertical pieces came off fine since they were just stuck to more tape. And then the horizontal pieces did come off pretty easily too. If we look closely at the tape, you can see that it pulled off a little bit of the cardboard but not like the entire top layer of cardboard. There's no residue left on the pieces and they still come apart very easily. Some of the pieces do have small tears in the cardboard, so the puzzle isn't pristine anymore, but the pieces are still in really good shape and you would definitely still be able to put it together as a puzzle. So I'm really happy with how that came out. The tape came off really easily and even though there were a few small tears on the back of the cardboard, there was no major damage. Moving on to the painter's tape. Once again, the vertical layer of tape came off without a problem. And then the tape that was actually on the puzzle pieces was basically the same as the washi tape. It came up really easily. It didn't leave any sort of residue. And even though it did pull up some of the cardboard, there wasn't any major damage to the pieces. If we zoom in, you can see that the cardboard looks a little bit fuzzy because there were some tears to the top layer of the cardboard. But again, it was nothing major that would prevent you from putting it together again. And finally, this is the one that I was most worried about, the contact paper. This one pulled off in one big piece. Mm -hmm. 
and I was pleasantly surprised to see that even though it did pick up probably a little bit more cardboard than the painter's tape did, it wasn't a ton of damage or anything that would ruin the puzzle. There were a few spots on the puzzle where the cardboard was lifted up a little bit more than the other two, but that's also an issue that I have on the front of the puzzle, so I don't know if I can blame that completely on the contact paper. So overall, I am so happy with all three methods. They all work really well if you want to temporarily hang up a puzzle, but then still be able to take it apart and do it again later. I think my overall winner though would have to be the painter's tape. My issue with the washi tape is that it's just very expensive for the amount that you have to use. You can see that we used more than half of the roll on just one puzzle, and at $10 a roll, that's gonna add up really quick. So, I mean, it totally did work, but it's probably just a little bit more money than most people would wanna spend on this project. Contact paper is definitely cheaper. You can get a roll on Amazon for like $6. That would be enough for probably eight to 10 puzzles if I did my math right, and also obviously depending on the size of the puzzles. But the contact paper that I used peeled up a little bit more cardboard than the other two methods. So the winner is painter's tape. Again, a roll that's about two inches wide will cost you six or $7. Uh, but it lasts for multiple puzzles and obviously like lots of different projects around your house. You can find it at any home improvement store or any like big department store. It was super easy to apply and it definitely felt the most sturdy of the three methods. And it came off easily without taking too much of the cardboard with it. So all that being said, I'm gonna have links to all three puzzles and all of the supplies right down below if you wanna try any of them out for yourself. I would love to know if any of you have ever taped a puzzle together and what worked the best for you. Maybe people are doing this literally all the time and I'm just way behind the curve. So let me know in a comment if you've ever done this before. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and if you want me to do more experiment videos like this in the future. And I'll see you all next time.